Okay, today we are opening up Clay Center. There's a few things to point out here. We have a box here with plastic bags inside. This is used for protecting your, art, uh, your clay project from drying out as you work on it, if you have to store it from one class to the next. We have some cardboard pieces here. This will be used for platforms. Anything you build with clay has to fit on one of these platforms. There are some clay tools here. If you're ever working with clay, you just take the whole box. Don't pull out individual tools. Take the whole box. Here is the clay. Whenever you come in um, to start clay for the day, you're going to just take this lid off and grab a piece about the s no bigger than an apple. Should fit in the palm of your hand. There's a couple reasons for this. Number one, we want to save clay and make sure there's enough for anyone who uses it, who wants to use it, um, to do so. And second, we don't want to take a bunch of clay right away to our table and let it dry out. Um, it just it, it creates more work. So anytime you take clay out of here, you need to lock the top back so it doesn't dry out. We'll look at this at the end of the demo, but you can see this is old clay that has maybe dried out or gotten hard. We're putting it in water because we're going to repurpose it. Okay, I have my clay, I have my bag, my cardboard, and my tools. You're going to need a messy mat to protect the table, make sure it doesn't get so dusty. And you're going to need a bowl for water. There are two choices. You can use these white bowls or there's some bigger ones back here. You just have to scoot the pallets over, pull this stack out, maybe, maybe actually take the whole stack, take the top one, put the rest back. And you're going to want to fill this with some water. As you work with clay, it's going to dry out and you're going to want to dip your hands in some water for certain projects. So I'm taking this over to my station. I have my messy mat set up. My clay is ready and let's begin. This type of clay that we have is, it's not meant to be eaten out of. And that is because, let's say you make a cup with this kind of clay. It's air dry clay. It's not like ceramic clay. If you make a cup, you let it dry, it's beautiful, and you go and you put some water inside, Oops. it's going to soak into the clay and it's going to become, it's going to re-moisten the clay and your cup is going to eventually fall apart. So we can't make any cups, we can't make any plates, anything that involves food or water or anything we can't make it with clay we can with this kind of clay we can only make sort of decorative little sculptures nothing that can actually hold any sort of food or water very important this needs to have your name on it and you should write it big so everyone can see it this is going to be your platform for building. Um, you can either have it on the front side or the back side. It doesn't matter. But you need to have your name somewhere so you remember which project is, or whose project is whose. Okay, first thing, here is the clay. If you ever work with it and you start to notice it's kind of cracking and it feels a little dry, just dip your hand in some water, add some water here and squeeze it through. I'm going to show you a few basic tips for working with clay. First I'm going to take off a little piece and I'm going to make a coil. One way you can make a coil is by rolling between your hands. If you've ever used um, play-doh it's kind of like making a snake with play-doh. You can also put it on the table and roll it out this way. Using a coil can be useful in a few situations. 
You can use it to obviously make an animal like a snake, but you can also take it and you can build it into something. You can stack it on top of each other. You can put it beside, beside itself. Okay, something like this. Um, but that's one way of kind of building up with clay. Another thing you can do is create a slab. This is kind of like if you've ever made cookies um, and you roll out the dough before you maybe use a cookie cutter or something, that's what a slab is. We have rolling pins in the, in the supply buckets. Um, so you can use a rolling pin. Notice how it kind of gets a little sticky. If, if the clay is too wet, it will really, really stick to this rolling pin. It doesn't usually work the best. Another way to create a slab is to use your hands or your fingers to sort of press it out. Okay, that's how you make a slab. A slab can be useful to create different kinds of things. You can use these tools in the box to, for example, cut out pieces and put them together. I could take these two pieces, for example, and sort of push them together with my fingers to create the wall. If you notice, now that he's pretty wet, he kind of wants to fall over. Maybe I need to do some creative thinking and figure out what I can put beside the clay to let it dry for a little while. All right, another way is you can use your fingers to form different things. Let's say I want to create a dog and I'm gonna kinda use my fingers. I'm smoothing and I'm also pushing to create different shapes. I want to create a dog's nose. If I'm doing something like this and I really want it to look accurate, I would advise finding a reference photo. Reference photos are good for any kind of art you do, not just drawing or painting. They would also be very useful for something like sculpture. Okay, let's say that's kind of my dog's head. Maybe I want to go in and maybe I want to add an ear. I can take this, the clay and sort of sculpt it so it looks like a dog's ear, smoothing, pinching. Takes a little bit of practice. It's not gonna be perfect right away. I can connect that. I'm just sort of pressing the clay, both pieces into one another. Maybe I want to add an eye for the dog here. I can either go into the clay to create it, or I could create a little eye out of clay. <laughs> Maybe inside of here I want to then add some more details. Maybe I want to add kind of his nose. Oops. No, I think I'll add a nose. Maybe it's a good idea to come in with some of these flatter tools and you can sort of press in the clay. I'm not really dragging because if I if I drag in the clay sometimes it sort of, cre it sort of uh, creates this broken edge, but instead I'm, I'm pushing and I'm just kind of rolling it lightly. So a few different techniques. Once your clay has dried, you can always go on top and paint. Um, so I'm not gonna really worry about a lot of details. I'm just kind of building the foundation because later I would go back and I would paint um, a lot of these details on the clay. In order to save your project, if it's time to clean up and you're not finished, 
Then you need to put whatever you're working on on the cardboard. You need to take the plastic and you need to wrap the plastic. Basically put them inside the bag and fold this edge down. Then you need to carry your project right back here inside the back door in the prep room you see five different boxes monday tuesday wednesday thursday and friday find your the day you have art if i have art on monday i'm going to open the monday box and i'm going to put my project inside if there are other projects in there i'm going to carefully put it in so i don't hurt anyone else's projects if my day, let's say my class is on Tuesday and I still see Mondays on top, then I'm just going to take the bucket, put it on the floor, I'm going to grab all the other buckets, put it on top, slide it back, and then Tuesday is right on top, ready for my class to put all of their artwork in. If I'm actually finished with my project and I want to... Um, Put, uh, and I want to dry it so that I can paint it, You're, I'm going to carry it. Remember, my name is on the back side of here or somewhere on the cardboard. I'm going to carry it, and I'm going to find a spot somewhere, somewhere on the drying rack. If my project is too tall and he's going to get hit by this next row, then I'm going to find a spot right up here and I'm going to put my project here to dry. It takes, depending on how thick your clay is, it's going to take quite a while to dry. It could take up to two or three days. So we're going to leave it here for a little while. It's going to be really, really important that you have your name so that I can go through and figure out what, what class shelf this needs to go on so things don't get lost. If I have extra clay that I didn't use, first I'm going to kind of give it a squeeze. If it still feels pretty good and um, wet, it doesn't feel too dry, then I'm going to take it over and put it back into the clay box here. If it's something that I've worked on quite a bit and I feel him and as I squeeze him, I'm seeing he's getting really cracked and he's dry, then I'm going to put him in here. And I just drop it in and go back to clean up my station. Okay, for cleanup, I'm putting all of my tools back in the container, putting the lid on top. If I didn't, if I don't need my bag anymore, I'm putting that back. We can also put this back, if it's not too destroyed, maybe just cross your name out. It's always good to re reuse and recycle. I'm dumping my water in the sink. I'm putting my messy mat back. And then let's talk about hands, how to clean your hands. If, if you use clay, you are going to have to clean up five minutes before everyone else cleans up. And the reason is, it's going to take a little while to get this clay off of your hands. When you turn the water on and you start first by rubbing your hands, it might come off pretty easy, but around your fingernails especially, it's going to be a little more difficult. You're going to have to kind of get in there and really clean out. You can take a sponge and you can rub that on your skin. The black part is kind of hard, but the blue part is a little softer. It'll help things go a little faster. Okay, I've mostly gotten it off. Come over here, grab a drying towel. And this you can also use to kind of scrape off some of that clay on your hands. Check them again if there's some spots that still need to be washed, just go back and, and get it off.